Hi there. We're Hi. reeling it. Hi. It's Nina. Nina. Paul. <laughs> and today, yet another exciting video. We are going to talk about surge protectors. Surge protectors. This is a very, very critical topic for all RVs. If you do not have a surge protector on your RV, you this get is one. something I suggest you get. It is one of our, I think, top five critical things that we recommend every single RVer own. Yeah, and kind of like your house or your, for your computers and sensitive electronics, why would you have a surge protector? To protect your electronics, right? You want to protect your expensive, sensitive electronics. But if lightning strikes or you get a bad AC condition, and the device will sacrifice itself, they're meant to die if something bad happens. And that way, you replace the surge protector, and not your and AC not breaker panel your coach, for fifteen hundred dollars yeah. or just TV or a computer that may have suffered during a, a storm or such like that. So you need one. And you might, and you might think, okay, uh, but really, you know, how often does power go bad? And um, pedestals at RV parks can be surprisingly bad. I mean, you, we have seen low power, um, open grounds, plenty of times, open grounds, open neutrals, reverse polarity. Yeah, reverse um, polarity is a bad one. And the worst was actually, and it didn't happen to us. It happens to friends of ours. Um, somebody who was obviously not qualified had wired the pedestal for 240 volts, and they plugged in and boom, all their electronics went. Um, and again, a surge protector would have protected them from that. It would have sacrificed itself, burnt up, and boom, the coach would have been protected. Right, and some of the new ones, um, the surge protectors the would not anyway. even have died at, at 240. Yeah. Like the one we have. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> that is something that's nice. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, it is really critical. You'd be surprised. And another example is uh, when RV parks uh, in summer, in the heat, and you have all these 50 amp coaches and they're all running their ACs, a lot of the time the parks are just not wired properly to handle those kind of loads. Yeah, so you get a and low voltage. And you will see the voltage drop down. And again, that is not good for your electronics. We've seen that as well. In fact, we think low voltage might have been one of the reasons uh, that we had our transfer switch failure. Right. Um, so low voltage leads to higher current. The pedestal will try to deliver the same power. And higher current, if you get larger than 50 amps, can cause problems in your transfer switch. Um, yeah, and lead to a transfer switch to fail. Right. Which is not good. So uh, let's talk about different types of surge. Yeah, different switch. types. So two basic types. You have a hardwired one. Which like, is actually this type that I'm holding in my hand. I know it's not wired, but it will be. <laughs> that we're going to install. And the portable kind, which is the most common one, which, which is we'll the one show you. that we've had for seven years. It, it's worked 90% of the time. Uh, there's cases where it has failed, and I'm pretty meticulous about checking um, RV park power, so maybe it hasn't failed on us as often as it would on somebody else. But anyway, uh, it can fail, but it's worked great for seven years. So either, either one works. Yeah, I mean, basically the, the big difference is the portable one you actually have to take out and plug into your power before you plug in your coach and it, it sits outside your RV. Some people worry about theft issues because of that. You can buy locks right. and stuff. Honestly, we've never had any no. problems. The biggest issue is you or us. In this case, we've <laughs> left ours behind. Yeah, we've actually forgotten <laughs> ours and we got it back. Yeah, they somebody sent it mailed back it to, to us, us, which is um, so nice. At, in Ashland. That Oregon. is another <laughs> thing that can happen is you might forget it. It's, it's portable, it's external to your coach. Um, the internal ones, they're internal. You never have to worry about them. You plug in Easy and, to plug and, in, and they're already, I mean, it's already there. You're not plugging in something before you plug in your coach. Yeah, you're not going to forget it. Right. But, but they tend to be more expensive. If they do fail, um, they can be a little bit harder to replace. But it's, uh, we can show you, it's, it's doable. We were fine with portable. Now we've decided to go with hardwired. So either way works um, as long as you have one. Right. Okay. So uh, let's go look at the portable one. We'll show you what it looks like. Okay. So before we go look at the portable pedestal, we actually have a few more things we want to yeah, discuss with you about uh, surge protector selection. Um, so the first thing is there's two different types for your coach, basically a 30 amp or a 50 amp surge protector. So just buy the one for your coach. If you have a 30 amp coach, buy a 30 amp surge protector, 50 amp coach. 50 amp surge protector. Oh. And this may be pretty basic, but you only need one. So if you have a 50 amp coach, you can use your 50 amp surge protector even if you're hooking up to yeah. 30 amps, say. You don't need a separate protector no. so, for that. So yeah, pretty basic. So just, just buy one, buy the one rated for your coach. Clear that up. 
And the second point is there's two, um, basically, there's two fundamental ranges of, yeah, of surge protectors. Of, yeah. Two classes. There's a low end, which is basically a surge protector, plus maybe a checking the wiring of your pedestal. And those cost around uh, $100. So if you see that kind of price, you're generally looking at an entry level type surge protector, um, which can be fine for some people. Yeah, and those tend to be all portable. And they're usually portable, yeah. And then, then there's the higher the high end, end Cadillac, which is what we're installing, and you can get both portable and hardwired. And they do additional stuff. Um, so they will, for example, check each individual line of the 50 amp if you have a 50 amp. They'll do frequency, amperage, voltage. They'll do under voltage, which low, high, we, and the under voltage we actually think is really important. Yeah, that's a critical one and line frequency for example mm -hmm. so they do pretty much everything they're off they're called intelligent surge protectors or yeah. energy management systems like ours the progressive industries yeah so you might hear them called by slightly different names um, but when you like if you search on Amazon you search surge protector and you'll find them and they tend to run in the 300 to 450 dollar range depending yeah. on where you buy them it is worth shopping around because sometimes you'll find the the exact same model unit uh for one price in one place and another price in another place yeah like the retail price of ours the uh ems hwc 50 was about 410 on the progressive site but we've seen it on amazon for as low as like 310 320. right yeah so, so you so can it find pays, real differences it in the pays price. to shop around um and then the last the companies thing, the companies you want a good company that stands behind their product that has good customer service um, there are different makers of surge protectors out there we really only have experience and the, the two uh, big ones. recommend two which is either surge guard the guy that uh, made our portable that we've used yeah the up company name is actually trc technology oh, yeah. research corporation i believe yeah and their uh, units are called the surge guard units so and, you'll uh, find both of those and progressive industries and progressive industries which is the one that we're going with now and we'll go through a little bit of detail about why that particular one uh later on in the video but those are the two biggest companies and they are both good quality companies i don't yeah, think you can't you can go, wrong. go wrong with either one um so yeah that's okay. kind of uh how to choose a uh, uh, protector and no. uh, now we're gonna now go, we're gonna go see the, <laughs> the portable one all right we're standing here at our pedestal, at pedestal. <laughs> beautifully done a very lovely AC pedestal here uh, nice and high um, so and this is our portable uh, surge protector it's a surge guard 50 amp portable protector we bought I think almost eight years ago we've been full timing for seven years we had the uh, the rv for what six months before that yeah so it's almost eight years old anyway as you can tell by the stickers I've, which are not which are not there anymore i've used it enough where i know what all the lights mean so that's pretty easy um so we've never lost it um well we did lose it we got it back um but we've never lost it to, uh, to a surge um so that's been good but i'm pretty meticulous about checking um, the, the AC uh, input here, whether it's wired uh, correctly. Um, so the, on, the downside, you, you plug it in here, it hangs down, and you connect your coach to the other side. Once all the lights, you know, yeah. light up in the proper order. There's, there's a capacitive delay there. Um, I can't remember exactly what this is. I think it's like a, over a minute. Um, so whatever it is, it's just basically waiting for um, everything to stabilize before, uh, before turning on power. So this works great. All right, now we're going to a hardwired one that we just showed you. It's going to be in there. Right. Right. In, in the, the bay. In the bay, right next to the transfer switch. Now, the only, one of the few upsides of that is obviously you don't have to plug this in and unplug it. So it makes it a little bit easier. You're not going to forget it. But for me, the more practical advantage is, is if you go to a state park, a lot of times you'll see the power pedestals are about yay high. Or this high yeah that's true okay so let's get say you go to that power pedestal and it's only a 30 amp uh, power so now not only do I need to plug in my portable surge protector but now this needs to go on the 50 amp plug to the actual uh, box at the at the state park so now I'm looking at what's that uh, two and a half feet three two feet maybe right two and a half feet before I get to my coach input. And if the pedestal is at this height, oftentimes it means the surge protector is on the ground. Yeah, we've, we've 
come across okay. that a lot, and, and we I, have to wrap and it I don't in like plastic. That, so then I put it on top of a bucket. Yeah. And we wrap it in a <laughs> plastic garbage bag or something like that. So when it rains, um, I almost had to get flooded and covered with water, which would not have been good. Yeah. So, I mean, they are meant for you know outdoor activity, but it's we just don't like having them sitting yeah, on the ground in water. They're not made to be underwater. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now I'm only connecting the 50 amp plug. Now all I need to do is convert from 50 amp to 30 amp, which I can do simply with this since the EMS is inside. Okay, but it gets even better. Ooh, tell me. I sound like an infomercial. I know you do. This is wonderful. <laughs> anyway, there's some better adapters made than this that are shorter and more robust. For example, uh, Progressive Industries, which is the same company that makes the surge protector that we're using, they've basically distilled 50 to 30 amp connector into this. Oh, that is so sexy. <laughs> so 50 amps on one side, 30 amps on one side. So, so now if I need to connect 50 to 30, I can do here and I have basically no distance um, from the connection to the outside the box. So the electrical connection is gonna be undercover. Yeah, we're and I don't have to worry idea, about yeah. a bucket, a plastic garbage bag, or anything being connected outside or, the cover, or anything being connected. So that's one of the things I love about this little connector. Um, you know, there's shorter cables. This one's kind of long. I don't like this. So we're going away from that. Um, and the actual box itself, okay, Progressive Industries, it also has all kinds of features. Um, it protects over voltage, under voltage. Uh, miswired di miswired AC pedestals, open grounds, open neutrals, reverse reversed wiring. Yeah, you can actually see everything. Yeah, all the air codes there. AC frequency, low uh, too frequency, low, too yeah. high. So anyway, the features are all about the same. You can get the same features in another device. Okay, the two uh, things that I like about this company and this device is number one, they have a lifetime warranty. That is nobody else huge. Has. Nobody so, else offers that. So as long as you install it correctly and all that stuff and meet the warranty requirements, if it gets struck by lightning and the and the board goes, you just lift this pun, they'll send you a new board that got sacrificed, it's replaceable, and you replace it and you're up and running. Okay, that's part of the warranty. That's one of the reasons um, I like that. And the second reason I like it is it's the smallest one with all the all these features. And the next nearest one is the surge guard. I think it's the 2040, 2420. I'll put that in the video. Yeah, we'll put all the relevant part numbers in the video. <laughs> but it's about 25% bigger than this one. And so if you're space constrained like we are in that bay, um, then this that'll be a big deal. Okay. Um, but all the other features got an external display that you can see the current and the voltage uh, coming out of the power. And so it's a great device. But those are the two main features, lifetime warranty and size that I like over the other devices. So uh, hopefully we'll show you uh, we'll show as the we install and uh, yeah, show it in action. Yeah, it's uh, pretty easy. We're going to wire the shore power in, cut the wire, and then this to the transfer switch. We're going to wire it before the transfer switch. So there we All go. Right. We're just looking at the... This is the uh, EMS of Progressive Industries. Um, we're just getting ready to install it. Uh, it's pretty easy installation. So you see the diagram here. We have the HW50C. And shore input power comes here on the left side and it's connected to L1, L2, L3. Okay, and then on the other side, uh, where it goes to the transfer switch, so coach load, this will be the output, T1, T2, T3. And the two current sensors go through the two hot wires. All right, that allows you to measure the current, that allows the box to measure the current that's going into the coach. All right, and then there's the data jack that comes in here. All right, so we'll mount a little LCD display near the front of the door so when you plug in you can see whether you have good power or not as soon as you plug into uh, into the, the uh, RV park pedestal or the whatever park pedestal. Should be neat. All right we're back again because we forgot something. <laughs> One additional thing related to the installation is the Progressive Industries Surge Protector has a delay. Uh, they call a it programmable delay. Programmable delay if the power goes off. It's mostly for your air conditioners um, so that the power goes off and will actually delay when, when power, power goes back on again yeah. to allow your compressors or uh, whatever for they your need ACs. to do. Um, the factory setting is 15 seconds, which is that that's what we went with because our air conditioners already have a built-in two-minute delay for the compressors. So it, we didn't need to change that. But if your ACs don't have that built-in delay, and just check the manual, then you change a jumper setting, and then you get a, I think it's two minutes and 16 seconds. 
delay. So it's a minor thing, but um, yeah. Part of your it. installation. So Mike has finished installing the transfer switch, and now we're looking at the EMS. We're going to install it upside down, just because the wire runs are a little easier that way. These, uh, yeah, these EMSs you can install any direction, even upside down. Which actually the SureGuard, I think I read you couldn't install it upside down. Oh, that's good to know. So that, minor, minor point, but man, that makes our life a lot easier. And now let's look at the beautiful new transfer switch. Oh yeah, very nice. So we're done with the installation here. Um, you can see it all looks nice and neat. We have the cord from our power cable uh, going into our surge protector. Uh, our surge protector, if you remember, was installed upside down, but we did flip around the cover so that we can actually read the error codes. Um, and then we have the output of the surge protector going into our transfer switch. And this is the monitor for our surge protector. It's pretty cool. It flips through uh, both legs of the 50 amps, tells you the voltage on each, tells you the amperage on each. And right now, L1 is 119 volts, zero amps. L2, 118 volts, 14 amps and 60 hertz which is good and a e0 which means our operation is normal so this is going to be great uh i want to say it's going to change our life but <laughs> it is actually going to be pretty darn cool all right so that wraps right. up this our wraps up. Uh, <laughs> our uh, overview of um surge projection in an rv and our particular um one that we chose uh, we've been running for a few days now, nothing to report. Yeah, we had a really is, bad storm last night. Yeah, really bad, huge Supercell, thunderstorm. thunderstorms. And we were happy we had the th surge protector. Nothing happened, but, you know, that's what, to, that's that's what it's for. there for. Um, and hopefully we will have many, many years of trouble-free uh, protection yeah. with this little unit. Yeah, the most important point, takeaway, get yourself a surge protector. Get yourself one if you don't Basic have one. Basic one, a high-end one, just get one. Yeah. All right. We'll see you down the road. Bye. Bye.